All right. Well, this is cool. This is different. Why don't you guys come on in, have a seat. Does anybody know what we're doing and what we're celebrating here today? All right. So we're celebrating the Passover. Now, some of us might not know what the Passover is. So maybe who would be willing to give us like a two-sentence description of what is the Passover? All right. We're going to come over here, listen up. Logan's going to educate us. It's when Jesus had a, a party and they had a bunch of food in the old days. All right, so they were celebrating the Passover then. We're actually going back to the beginning where the Passover actually comes from. So good. What are we talking about when we're talking about the Passover? Why didn't they like Egypt? What, I mean, was it not good weather? Was They it... were slaves! Okay, okay. So the story here today is about God's people being in Egypt. They wanted to leave. And God's story of how, they, how he released them. So, awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So, that kind of gives the context a little bit today of what we're talking about. And then this was something the Israelites would celebrate year after year after year as Logan mentioned to us. And it's also pretty important for us today, and we're going to kind of figure out why. But the way that we're going to celebrate, and the way that they would celebrate then, was normally that people would celebrate with their families. And I know your whole family's not here today, but what's the closest thing that we have to a family in this room? You got friends, you got your small group, so you're going to be kind of celebrating this in your small groups. So there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be going through here. We're going to keep it moving. Um, so um, we're going to make sure we talk it through. So right off the bat, what we need to do is we need to turn on our candles. Does everybody have candles? If not, we're going to pass them out. You should all have not a real candle. But if you can get your candle, you can turn it on, put it in front of you. All right, welcome to the group that's just coming in. We are celebrating Passover. You have candles in your bag, the leaders. If leaders, if you guys want to help manage your bag for the most part, that would probably make the day go a lot smoother. Everybody's got one candle, one candle for your group. Put it in the middle, one candle per family. All right, go ahead and set it down in the middle, almost like you're around a little campfire-ish kind of thing. We are going to go ahead and get started and read together. So those of you who are still getting seated, go ahead and have a seat. Find your candle. Everybody else, here we go. You guys ready for this? This is from Exodus 6, 6 to 7. Say it with me, okay? Say, therefore, to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of kindness. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God, and you will know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from the burden of the Egyptians. All right. So, in the Passover, there are four cups. So, we're going to look at these real quick, and they all come out of this verse. So, here they are. First of all, he talks about, I will bring you out. So there's a cup of that. But when we say cup, what we basically mean is different parts of it. Um, so four little segments. And don't worry, the first two are the longer ones. Three and four go a little bit faster. So I will bring you out. I will free you. I will redeem you. And I will take you as my people. So when we talk about the cups, they're um, normally... They would have a cup they would drink from, but today, to make it easier, we all should have a juice box. So, you're going to get your juice box. Do not drink all from your juice box. When you get your juice box, you may take one drink from it. But you need to save this because we need it for all of them. So go ahead, you can get your juice box now. You can take out your straw. Open it up and put it in. Why don't you wait until everybody has their juice box in your group. And once everybody has a juice box and has it there, 
you guys to take a sip together. All right, everybody got their juice box? All right, we're going to have the first cup or first sip, which is the one that talks about I will bring you out. So go ahead and take your sip right now. As soon as you're done with that, there should be wet wipes for everybody. And then we also need to symbolically, we're going to wash our hands right now. And uh, we're going to wash our hands, and this is what they would do as well, because what they are trying to symbolize is two things. They're trying to symbolize clean hearts and clean hands. So while you're doing this, let me just talk about that a little bit. What do we mean by clean hearts and clean hands? Somebody here, well, actually, I'm just going to tell you. We're talking about trying to do the right thing for the right reason. Clean heart, clean hands. Go ahead and wash your hands when you get these things. All right, I see most of us got that done. Why don't you guys pay attention up here a little bit, and we're going to keep moving along. We're going to try to get one group at a time here, get, get us at least focused. Clean hearts, clean hands. So what we're talking about here is the idea that we are not going to fight with our brothers, not because we don't want to get in trouble, because God wants us to be kind to others, right? So doing the right thing for the right reason is what we're talking about. All right, so we're going to go through and read some scripture, and uh, we're going to have uh, in the groups, a lot of times we're going to have you pick one of, the, one of the children to read it with me. So right now, small group leaders, pick, pick one person, and you're going to read this next one with me. So up on the screen, it's going to come. We're going to read it together. It is a question that we're going to actually ask. So question number one that we're going to ask, and you're going to ask this to all the people in your group. Here we go. One, two, three. On all other nights, we do not dip our vegetables even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? So that's the question they would ask, and here's the answer. In a meal like this, people would take a piece of parsley and dip it in salt water. Don't do it yet. We're going to do it in a second. They call this carpus. In the salt water. I need you guys to stay focused here real quick, though. They did this to symbolize the tears and the pain of the Israelites. So as we were talking about, the Israelites were slaves, and it was a sad time for them. And so what we're going to have you do is we're going to have you um, get out that salt water. It should be a long um, bottle. Yep, there. And there should be parsley. You're going to go around... And each person in your group is going to be able to talk about one sad thing that's happened recently. As they do that, they can dip that in the water, they can eat it, and then it'll be the next person in your group's turn. So, again, any questions from any small group leaders? One sad thing, they're going to dip it and eat it. All right, how many people does that taste fantastic for? Uh, groups need more time, are we okay? All right, we're going to move on. If I can get you guys to focus here. How many people did that taste fantastic for? Anybody? You liked it? One? Oh, okay, all right. Again, this is to symbolize this. This does not taste good. It's to symbolize the tears of the Israelites. And also, and also it's here to remind us of the sad things that are true in our life as well. All right. Next question they would ask, so I need, um, I need another, another volunteer, um, so, a number, so pick another child, and you're going to read the second question with me, and again, you're going to read it just to your group, all right? So everybody got, everybody got a person? Here we go. On the count of three, one, two, three. On all other nights, we eat bread. On this night, why do we only eat matzah? All right, so... Stay with me for a little bit here. I'm going to answer the question for you. But I kind of need your attention before we do this. All right. So yeast is something we put into bread and it makes it puffy. The Bible talks about yeast being like sin. Just like yeast spreads and changes all of the loaf, sin also changes us. So we're going to find the piece of matzah in our kit and we're going to talk about it for a second. But... It looks like this. Looks like this. So again, um, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. I want to tell you guys a little bit about this though. Okay, so back here to the matzah. 
This bread um, does not have any yeast, which makes it flat. Remember we talked about sin affects us. It, it makes things change, like the bread. It also changes us. This bread has no yeast in it. At Passover, they would only eat the matzah bread. Um, and this next verse tells us a little bit why. So small group leaders, if you guys can read these verses along with me. Here we go. Exodus 12, 34. So the people took their dough before it was leavened. Their kneading bowls being bound up in their cloaks in their shoulders. And then 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So it's talking about how we should not let sin affect us and grow in our bodies. So, as you see this piece of bread here, what's important to know about it is that they would cook this on a grill. When they cook things on a grill, like an oven, when you cook something in the oven, the heat comes from what direction when you have something in the oven? It comes from everywhere. It comes from all around. If you're cooking it on a grill, where's the heat coming from? The bottom. If you look on here, you'll see some of the brown marks, like the grill marks from where it's cooked. You also see that there's holes in this. They would poke holes in this bread so the heat could come up and through and help it cook. And so as we're talking about that, we're also talking about the idea um, that when we, with matzah was prepared without yeast, we already talked about that, which is symbolic of sin. Jesus was and is without sin. He was a perfect sacrifice for the redemption of our sin. Isaiah talks about this verse. Let's all read the verse together, okay? So we just talked about how they poked holes in there. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him the chastisement with the broadest peace, and with his wounds we are healed. So that's, as we're talking about the matzah bread, that's what we're talking about here. All right. Third question to your group. So I need a third person to ask your group this. And then right afterwards, I'm going to answer it. And uh, don't, do what, don't do what it's talking about yet. Okay, so here's question number three. On the count of three, one, two, three. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we only eat bitter herbs? I know, some of you guys know what's coming here. Here we go. Bitter herbs are eaten to remind us of the difficulties the Israelites had in Egypt. So we had tears for sadness. This is for the difficulties. Their lives were made bitter with hard work, with labor and brick and mortar, and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. So, should be little spoons that might be there, and there should be some horseradish. Go ahead and take a little tiny bit of the bitter herbs and taste them. But don't worry, we got something sweet coming in a second. So go ahead. All right, so remember for the Israelites, it was very bitter. But here comes the good news. I got better stuff coming for you, so I have your attention. It was bitter. Those, that horse rash was bitter. Their life in Egypt was really bitter. But the Passover is celebrating what? What happened? They got freed. So we got something sweet. So right now, if we get the applesauce out, and the raisins, you can mix the apple, or the raisins and the applesauce and go ahead and eat that because it's sweet and it reminds them, it reminds us that God brought them out of Israel. I'm sorry, out of Egypt. Brought them out of Egypt. Go ahead and mix them together. It's called charsat is what they called that. All right, I'm going to give you another 30 seconds or so. With a charzot. So go ahead and get that. All right. So hopefully that tastes better. Um, one of the other things that's important for you guys to know, and we're going to do this in a second, but I'm going to tell you about it now, is that the parents would take a piece of the matzah and they would wrap it into a pouch. And we kind of we have a piece already already there, and it was wrapped, and they would put it into three. It would go inside and they would wrap it into three parts. And that's really important too, but it'll be basically in a white pouch, and it's hidden, and we're going to let you guys look, some people look for that in a minute. But that special piece here is called the afikomen. 
Can you guys say Afikoman? All right, let's try it on three. One, two, three. Af. Good. So it was in here. Three sections to remember the three members of the Trinity. Three members of the Trinity are who? God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Okay, so wrapping it in the three parts there of the Trinity. So we go ahead and we put in the, the Af African in the middle of the pouch. Uh, and before you arrived, we hid this. And in a minute or two, I'm going to have one member from each of your small group come up. And you're gonna get, they're going to search for it. And there's a special prize for the whole entire group, the family, who finds it. So we're not doing that right now. Right now, we're going to go ahead and read this next verse together. Um, and so this will be for all of us, okay? You guys ready? On the count of three, we're going to read this verse. One, two, three. Deuteronomy 6, 20 to 25. When your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and rules that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous, against the Egyptians and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us all the land that he swore to give our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are today. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all that is commanded before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Yeah, it's a lot to read. Um, it's a lot of promises there and a lot of, a lot of memories. So those great and grievous things against the Egyptians, those were all the plagues that they did. All right, so right now I need a, you just select a fourth, fourth person to uh, read the fourth question to your group. And this is the last question here. On three, here we go. So you're going to read it to your group. On all other nights we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we only eat reclining? Tonight we remember what God has done for his people, and we eat in comfort to remember that. So what we want you guys to do for a minute or two is to go through and write down different ways that God has provided for you, ways um, that God has been kind and that you've experienced him with that. So talk in your small group, and we'll come back in a minute. That is the end of the second cup, or the first cup. We're now going to move into the second cup. And the second cup is a cup of plagues. Anybody remember how many plagues there were? There were ten. What we need everyone to do right now is to get a napkin or your paper in front of you. Uh, small group leaders, you should also find that you have one big thing of juice. I want you to open up that juice in front because what's going to happen is I'm going to read a plague. Everybody dip your finger in. You're not going to drink this. Dip your finger in and make a dot. On your, on your napkin or on your paper when I read each of the plagues. All right, so I'm going to read the ten plagues. You guys can dip and dot. All right. Here we go. We're going to read them. Plague number one, water to blood. Go ahead and dip and dot. Plague number two. Frogs, dip and dot. Plague number three, gnats. Plague number four, flies. Plague number five, death of animals. Plague number six, boils, all those sores on the body. Plague number seven, hail. Plague number eight was locusts, came and ate everything. Plague number nine was darkness. And plague number ten was the death of the firstborn. 
So we have this up here kind of as a reminder for you guys of what happened with that last plague. If you guys remember, there was a lamb that the Israelites had to kill and they had to put the blood. Where did they have to put the blood at? On the doorpost, over top, and on the sides. And that was to help the, that was so that they could show their faith in God, but also so the death angel would pass over. So we're going to read, um, small group leaders and myself, we're going to read the next verse, verses together. John 1, 29 to 34. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness... I saw the Spirit descend from the heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself didn't know him, but he who sent me to baptize said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit, and I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. All right, and then all of us are going to read this together, um, the next verses together. Here we go. Hebrews 10, 14. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. All right. So we've been talking about Jesus and now is the time where we are going to try to find the hidden Afikoman. So, small group leaders, select one person from your group, send them up here to me. Okay, so, somewhere behind me, we've got something that looks like this, but bigger, that is hidden. What I need is I need uh, you guys to pick your side you're going to start on and go to the steps. And then when you go to your steps, we're going to line up shortest to tallest. So get to whatever side you want to get to. This could be important. Maybe it's not, though. Pick your side. All right, we got steps on both sides. If you're, if you're shorter like me, you get to go to the front. You guys go to the front. You guys go to the front. No running. Uh, if I see anyone running, you are disqualified. Let's get the shortest in front. Yep, you guys, come on up here. All right, on the count of three, you guys can walk fast, but if you run, I'm sending you back. One, two, three, go. Everybody got it up. Come find it. Everybody come on in. Don't run, don't run. Kind of looks like this, but it's not this. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I hit it good. I'm really happy. All right. Oh, we got people who are close to it. I did a great job. Oh, my goodness. People are going to be so upset when they see it. All right. Here we go. We got someone who found it. You guys want to see where it was? I'll show you guys where it was. I was sneaky. It's white, and this is white. It was sitting right here. Wait, we had people who came right by it and just missed it, and that's okay. That's the fun of the search. So who found it? My All right, Thomas. Everyone else go back to your groups. You stay with me because we got something special for you. All right, what group are you with? If you, all right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. What they would do is they would give out pieces of silver for whoever found this to remind us also of the fact that Jesus got paid, or that they paid silver for when 
Judas brought Jesus to, to the uh, brought Jesus to the relig religious leader. So there's one piece of silver coin. It's chocolate. It's not real silver for each of your group. So you should have enough there. Um, go hand them out, and if I'm short, let me know. But I think I, I think I got it. So the linen pouch was folded three times, and in the middle is the bread, as if it's like buried in the pouch. Here it is. Remember what the bread points to. It's without yeast, which is like being without sin. And who was without sin who was buried? Jesus. So this points and always reminds them year after year as they did the Passover about Jesus. And so we gave out the pieces of silver, which reminds us of the sad part of Jesus' story, where he had his friend Judas, who sold him to people who hated him for silver. All right, now is the time in the Passover where we go ahead and taste this. And this is what we celebrate every time we take communion. So go ahead. Um, you can taste that now. Small group leaders, while we're doing this, just go ahead in like one to two minutes, just um, explain to your group what communion is all about while they're doing this. So just give a brief description of communion. All right, so go ahead and wrap that up. And that wraps up for us the second cup. So we're going to begin the third cup here, okay? This is the cup of redemption. It's a, the cup symbolizes the blood of the Passover lamb. It's also part of our communion service. So Jesus talked about, Jesus talked about how this cup was a symbol for his blood. Perhaps you've heard these verses before. Like they do this at communion. So I almost need everybody. Likewise, also the cup. After supper saying, the cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Go ahead, you can sip on that third cup right now if you haven't already. And after the final plague and the death of the firstborn, God painted a picture of what it was, was to come. At Passover, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and God provided a way for them to escape through the Red Sea. Uh, years later, God would provide a way for the people to escape the punishment once again. The blood of a lamb, that lamb was, Jesus, uh, was God, Jesus, who takes away the sin of the world for people who trust in him and can be rescued and have eternal life. If you have any questions about that or what that means, um, please do talk to your small group leaders. Our fourth cup, we're getting close, is a cup of praise. Thanks be to God for the redemption of the Israelites through the Passover lamb, as well as all of us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. So go ahead and take your fourth cup, fourth sip, whatever's left in your juice box, you can drink that now. And I'm going to have you guys um, read this with me together, okay? So I'm just going to come Jeremiah here. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. For I will forgive their sin and I will remember their sins no more. So, we're going to have you guys grab your instruments. I've heard you guys shaking them a little bit. You guys got your instruments? Worship team's coming out. They're going to sing a song, and you can use your instruments during the song.
right, excellent. Um, we I got a couple more things. We are going to uh, do a prayer here together, and then afterwards uh, we got a short video for you guys, and then maybe some instructions. So together, um, so this comes from the Common Book of Prayer. We're going to read this together. You guys ready? On three. One, two, three. Rejoice now, heavenly host and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the round earth bring with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King.